This is an expository film that demonstrates how art can imitate life. The themes revolve around the Nigerian political system, which chronicles the political and electoral systems over the last two decades. We start by seeing this cool quote by Wole Soyinka, the politics of do or die does not guarantee who does and who dies, spooky. Following that, we see an overview of the confluent state, a fictitious Nigerian state. It is a day before the state's gubernatorial election, and the two candidates are the incumbent and corrupt governor, Idris Sani, and Mabel King, who is supported by the majority of the people in the state. The scene shifts to Ike, a young idealistic deputy campaign manager for Mabel King, whose late husband was a senator. Mabel is paired by her party with this almost useless deputy, in her bid to become the country's first elected female governor. Ike believes in Mabel's vision for change, he and his mentor, senior campaign manager, Sekiru, a campaign veteran, believe they can get Mabel elected by running a clean campaign. However, on election day, after the masses have casted their votes, two NYSC electoral officials, Amina and Lucky, in a bid to earn more money were hired by a senior electoral official to rig the election, although initially hesitant, Amina was later sold in by Lucky who would do anything for money. They were brought to a primary school in Ikuno community where the heinous act were perpetrated. However, Sekiru arrived there, questioning their activities when election supposed to have ended hours ago. The rig leader tries to wave him off, before the arrival of Sani's armed thugs who degenerated the situation by shooting and killing everyone including Sekiru. Amina and Lucky were able to escape, finding shelter in the bush. Lucky sneakily had been recording the whole thing on his device, and was able to capture an unidentified man who scolds the thugs for the massacre and instructs them to burn down everything to get rid of evidence. In the aftermath, the Independent National Electoral Commission cancels the results in Ikuno local government area, the largest community supporting Mabel King, and Sani consequently went on to win the election. Mabel, whose loss is insignificant in comparison to Sekiru's family, who had just lost a husband, father, and provider, consoles them. Sani, the reinstated governor, arrives to pay his respects as well, but this is just an attempt to gloat over Mabel. Knowing he has a hand in Sekiru's death and the rigging of the election, she becomes more determined to contest the election results, even though her party members initially disagreed, seeing her steadfastness, they went along. After filing a court case against Sani and his party, contesting the election results based on gross electoral misconduct, fraud, and murder. She then assembles a legal team consisting of a barrister, Ike, and Bookie, Sekiru's daughter who showed interest in an effort to clear the false narrative the media propels her father's name. The election petition tribunal was relocated to Abuja due to the prevalence of violence in the confluent state, which could be good for Ike because he gets to see his siblings again, but his joy quickly turns to worry when his little brother demands a large sum of money, which Ike refuses to give him because he has no satisfactory reason for needing the money. On the first day of the election petition tribunal, three judges are assigned to the case, Justice Tony Ashafa from the customary court of appeal, he is known for his tendency for womanizing, and he is easily bought by Sani. The second judge is Justice Gambo from the Sharia Court of Appeal, and the third is Justice Matilda from the High Court, who is the least susceptible to bribery. The proceedings begins, with the petitioner's team raising some good points of how Mabel was in the lead before the massacre in the town where she has strong support, hence the election should have been inconclusive, and a runoff be conducted rather than declaring Sani the winner. The respondent team first denied any involvement in the massacre, then raised a better point as to what the petitioner's campaign manager was doing in the school that late at night. The first day was good for Sani, and after hearing how well his barrister did, his special assistant and fixer St. James, hires Dan Lady Umar, a young lawyer and son of Sani's biggest campaign contributor to help counter Ike and Bookie's investigations, citing that the trio went to the same law school. Meanwhile Mabel's team does not deter as well, she still had the support of the women who make majority of Ikuno community, while they still seek more evidence against Sani. The police prove to be of little help as they subtly ask for bribe to continue with their investigations, but Mabel doesn't roll that way, so they demand the full list of everyone assigned to the polling unit, after being aware of some unaccounted people. Sekiru's death worries Mabel so much she couldn't sleep at night, as she constantly checks on her children, troubled of a possible attack. It's day two in the tribunal, and Dan Lady is in court too, ready to take flight. After the proceedings, he approaches Ike and Bookie, after reacquainting themselves, he proposed they hang out that night, to Ike's disbelief, Bookie accepts, so he had to go along with her. While they were out that evening, Ike remains unsettled about Dan Lady's sudden reappearance in their lives, he and Bookie both get a notification on their phones at the same time, prompting Dan Lady to take their phones to have them present. Coincidentally, Mabel wakes up from her sleep as she gets a premonition. Ike wakes up the next morning in Dan Lady's house, where they spent the night, 
Dan Lady and Bookie are having breakfast in the adjoining room, and it is revealed that they were lovers in law school, and he plans to win her back. Ike joins them, and they discuss their differing political perspectives, and it is clear that Dan Lady and Ike's rivalry began in law school. They refused to tell him about the case when he asked, since his father is Sonny's biggest campaign contributor, he is guilty by association. However, Bookie finally slipped when she revealed the missing NYSC members and the list the police was to procure for them, she quickly realized herself, and Ike had to cover for her mishaps. Later, Mabel grants an interview where she reiterates her commitment to the people of Confluence State, assuring them of her steadfastness to reclaim her mandate back. After the interview, Ike and Bookie make her aware of their decision to follow up with the investigations back in Confluence State, since the police has a lackadaisical attitude towards it. In Ikuno, they first visit the crime scene and on seeing the place her father was killed, Bookie breaks down in tears. Meanwhile, Dan Lady uses the information he obtained from Bookie to obtain the list from the bribe-seeking police officers, and he leaps into action, speaking to the families of the missing people before Bookie and Ike could, with one of the fathers expressing his grief for his missing son by chasing them with a cutlass. Dan Lady finally makes headway when he meets Lucky's mom, he disguised himself as her son's old classmate, but she sees through his lies, and tells him Lucky wasn't there, he leaves his business card with her before leaving. Lucky comes out of his hiding, but wouldn't tell his mom why he is hiding, or why he left the confluent state, he takes Dan Lady's business card from her, and instead promise to fix everything. Ike and Bookie too make headway when they meet Amina at her parents' house, she tells them her experience, and being a law-abiding citizen, she reported the killings to the police in confluent state, we've all seen the police, so we know how that ended. They ask her to stand as a witness, but her mom objects to it, citing how dangerous it could be. When they were leaving, Ike gets a distress call. Apparently his brother was arrested by the EFCC for his involvement in an online fraudulent transaction. The next day, Dan Lady who is waiting some distance away from Lucky's house, spots him leave. He follows him by foot, but Lucky quickly realizes he is being followed, a chase ensues and he was able to loose Dan Lady. He meets up with Amina afterwards, knowing they won't stop coming after him or her, he proposed they use the video evidence he has to their advantage, by selling it to the highest bidder, she refused, saying they should take it to the court, but Lucky is ready to risk his freedom for money, so he leaves. After going through his brother's case, Ike realized the immensity of it, his possible play would be to let his brother do the time, or buy off his freedom, but he might be too morally upright for that. The team too is in a situation that could require them to morally compromise, since their failure with Amina, they deliberated on bribing Justice Gambo. Ike and Mabel were against it, surprisingly, Bookie was for it, but Mabel stood her ground not to compromise. Following that, Ike seeks assistance from Mabel for his brother's case, and she promised to get the best lawyers to fight the case, however, he is disappointed, because with her position, she could easily have someone get him out of jail. Despite Mabel's refusal to bribe the judge, her lawyer carried it out after receiving approval from her party members. Mabel recognizes the friendly gestures the judge and the lawyer exchanged, and realizes what he had done. In support of Mabel, the Ikuno women's leader performs admirably on the witness stand. Later, after the proceedings, St. James approaches Ike to offer his assistance with his brother's case, but Ike declines, so he slips his business card into Ike's pocket in case he changes his mind. That night, Mabel makes it clear to the barrister and her party members that she is the boss, and they shouldn't interfere with her process. Lucky on the other hand, is hiding at a friend's place, he calls Dan Lady requesting 10 million naira in return he gives them the video. Dan Lady drops the call, and calls St. James, informing him of the new developments. Later, Lucky gets a call, and rather than a deal offer he hears his mother screaming. He is told to go to a location and is eventually abducted. He is taken to their hideout, where he is tortured and dehumanized until he gives up his phone and the location of the video duplicate he made, and stored in a memory card. Dan Lady who couldn't stomach the inhumane treatment given to Lucky questions St. James outside, and gets a slap across the face for his worries, like he didn't know what would happen to Lucky when he gave him up. He is then charged with the job of retrieving the memory card, and after he does, while returning with the goons, he sneakily inserted the memory card in his phone and made a copy. When they returned, he sees the lifeless bodies of Lucky and his mother. After giving St. James the memory card, before leaving, he is given another job to find Amina. Amina, who had been calling Lucky's phone but had not received a response, decides to visit his house, but instead finds people gathered in front of the house, and when she approaches them, she discovers the dead bodies of Lucky and his mother, and she weeps as she rushes away. Knowing her and her parents' safety is now compromised, she flees with them, and when Dan Lady and the goons arrive at the house, they can't find them. Ike discards St. James' business card so he is not tempted to use it. 
He and the barrister then take Amina to a safe house after she describes what happened to Lucky. Amina is a loose end for Sonny and his team, and he is furious at them for failing to catch her. Dan Lady, aware that he is out of his depth, mulls over his next steps with the video. In the meantime, Ike updates his brother on the circumstances of his case, and the efforts his attorneys are making to either free him or shorten his sentence. Seeing his brother that way breaks him, knowing he could have done more for him. Amina agrees to testify, and this time her mother backs her up. However, because she was not listed as a witness earlier, and the lack of video evidence may have posed a problem, nonetheless, the barrister was able to make it happen despite Justice Tony Ashafa's objections. Amina describes the massacre, Lucky's passing, and identifies St. James, the special assistant to the governor, as the perpetrator. After that, she was able to identify the copy of the report she had earlier given to the police, which was simple because the officer in charge had spilt soup on it while he was eating. In response, the respondent links her propensity for accepting payments in order to influence election results, and argues that it is plausible that the petitioner also paid her to cooperate with their narrative. Bookie maintained her optimism following the legal proceedings by requesting that Mabel give her a position when she wins, which pleased Ike and Mabel. When they approached a stop sign, Sonny's men drove by and opened fire on them. They were able to duck, but the driver was not so fortunate and died. The near-death experience leaves Bookie shaken, Ike consoles her and they ended up being intimate. Not knowing what will happen next, Mabel relocates her children to a safe location. She then issued a press statement claiming Governor Sonny attempted to murder her. Similarly, Sonny issues his own statement, claiming to have been attacked as well by entities against progress in the state. Dan Lady, who has seen how far Sonny is willing to go for power, is fed up and calls Bookie for a meeting. He revealed to her and Ike the role he played when they first met, and to make amends, he gives them the video evidence and a list of accomplices St. James utilizes, earning him a slap across the face from Bookie. The judges rule that the video should be admitted as evidence after some legal wrangling. The video is then shown, and the court is stunned. St. James is immediately tipped off, while his goons weren't too lucky as they got apprehended by the police. Since St. James evaded the arrest, Ike, suspects he is on to Dan Lady, so he leads the police to Dan Lady's house while still attempting to call him. St. James, however, had already arrived. He tortured Dan Lady, and just as he was about to shoot him, the police broke in, resulting in a series of gunshots between them, and St. James is killed in the process. The justice's final ruling favored the petitioner, Mabel King, and the Independent National Electoral Commission is directed to conduct fresh polls in Ikuno local government within 90 days, while the National Electoral Offenses Commission is directed to investigate Idris Sani on the matters revealed during the tribunal. Three months later, after the rerun elections, Mabel is declared the winner and a party is thrown to celebrate it. The women leader gets a crate of drink and appreciation for her support. A foreign observer and journalist who had earlier expressed his doubts about Mabel to Ike, apologizes, and he accepts. And finally, Ike who is now a chief of staff and bookie, now his subordinate, make their relationship official. Later in the party, the women leader who is intoxicated out of her mind reveals to Ike that Sekiru had nothing to do with the rigging, rather he wanted to stop them. Ike, putting two and two together, questions Mabel. She accepts to had rigged the election, she expresses her regrets, stating there was no other way to win, even though she had been the people's choice, the opposition would have rigged it to claim victory, and nothing would have been done about it. So, she succumbed to the system, hoping the end would justify the means. The women leader had set it up, and when Sekiru found out, she had a change of heart and they both tried to stop it, so Sekiru went down to the polling unit to stop it, which resulted in his death. Buki who had been standing by the door overheard everything. She and I couldn't fathom Mabel's betrayal. After some time has passed, Mabel is sworn in as governor in the presence of her children. After that, I gives her his resignation letter, and nothing she says can persuade him to stay. Outside, he is surprised to see Bookie accept her new position. After all that Mabel has done to her and her family, she believes Mabel is remorseful and has changed. He asks her if she can trust Mabel. She says no, and after some more back and forth, he refuses to stay with a morally compromised politician or girlfriend. In the film's final scenes, Mabel addresses the people of Confluence State, declaring the beginning of a new dawn. Ike's brother remains in prison, with nothing but time to reflect, and the film ends with Ike walking into the empty distance. Fun fact, he and Justice Matilda may have been the only two honorable people in the film. Like a hydra, corruption has crept into every aspect of our lives. Our electoral institutions, the police, the judiciary, and even the most honorable among us occasionally fall victim to its tentacles. The fascinating thing about hydras is that they have the ability to regenerate, which means that if you cut off a part of this organism, a new part simply sprouts out.
This is also true of corruption in my beloved country. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.